your voice and thank Jesus for his grace. Thank you for the sacrifice of Calvary Street. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for your grace. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's good to know that Jesus is alive. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Everything that, any challenge that we may have, Jesus has already done it. Jesus has already paid it all. He has already taken the price for our sake. I'm so glad I don't have to die for my sins. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has already done it. This is amazing grace. And this is the song that we're going to sing about. Hallelujah. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. So let's sing. This is amazing rain. This is unfailing love. Oh Lord, that you will take my place. That you will. You lay down your life. You lay down your. That I would be set free, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Jesus, I sing for. Oh. Now let's sing together. Sing. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Now listen. 
who brings the chaos back into order, who makes the orphans a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory. The King of powerful kings. This is amazing. Day. Yes, this is unfailing love. That you, my Lord, would take my place. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, that you would say, you lay down your life. Hey, that I would be set free. Yeah. the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave sing worthy 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 is the lamb who was slain who conquered worthy is the lamb This is amazing grace. So this is a failing. Oh, oh, that you would say, that you would say my cross. Sing together, sing. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Oh. Grace can move mountains of guilt and shame. Grace can flood your days in the desert with streams of living water. Grace can bring you through the fire of adversity without the smell of smoke being upon you. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can only receive it because God is so glad to give it. Grace is an ocean without a shoreline. Grace has no limit. God's grace will give you a new beginning. God's grace is greater than your sin. God's grace is greater than all your faults and failures. It's the only thing that can truly heal you. God's grace comes to even those that have not been faithful. God's grace comes to even those that have not really walked the way they should walk. And yet, His grace and His mercy is extended to every single person that will believe Him that will come, that will humble themselves under his mighty hand. So often we think that God is only interested in the good people, the people that have it all together, people that have never made mistakes, never given to temptation. If your performance is good enough, then you can expect God's goodness. The truth is, it's just the opposite. When you mess up, God doesn't turn away from you. He turns to you. His grace comes looking for you. Jesus told a parable about a shepherd that had a hundred sheep, but one of them went astray. The shepherd left the ninety-nine and went looking for the one. That was grace coming to look for you. You can be high on drugs and grace is looking for you. You can be working in the wrong kind of place, grace is looking for you. You can be cheating people, dishonest, no integrity, and God will leave the ninety-nine and come after you. You can be discouraged, depressed, about to give up on life. The good news is, right now, 
grace is looking for you. You may have made mistakes. You're not where you want to be in life. You could easily sit on the sidelines. Let the accusing voices convince you that you are useless and nothing good is in your future. No! Right now, grace is coming for you. God is saying, I'm not mad at you. I'm madly in love with you. I'm not holding anything against you. I'm not keeping a record of mistakes. I'm not even interested in your past. I'm interested in your future. Friends, it doesn't matter to God where you've been. What matters to God is where you're going. That's why he's coming after you. That's why he won't leave you alone. His grace will never give up. He loves you too much to let you miss your destiny. You can turn away again and again and again, but you know what? Grace will keep coming wherever you go. Grace will keep looking. You can't outrun the grace of God. You can't do too much wrong to keep it away. You can't turn away too many times. God's grace will keep coming, saying, I've got something better. I've got forgiveness. I've got mercy. I've got restoration. I've got a new beginning. And if you will shake off the guilt, the condemnation, start making choices that honor God, He'll bless you in spite of your mistakes. He'll make something great out of your life in spite of your past. God never gives up on you. Don't give up on yourself. Receive the grace. Believe that there's something amazing in your future. The scripture says, God came to seek and to save those that are lost. Seek means to go after, to pursue, to track down. Even when we run away, God runs to us. Even when we don't measure up, God says, that's okay, I forgive you anyway. You might think, I don't deserve it. It was my fault. I brought the trouble on myself. That's when grace steps in. You can't earn it. You don't have to be good enough. It's a free gift. All you have to do is receive and listen. The price has already been paid 2,000 years ago, and it's not our goodness. It's God's goodness. That's why it's called amazing grace. You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it. It's just the goodness of God. This man was a son of God. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm so sorry to disturb. Did you know this man? He? I am his mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. From the time that he was born, I knew he would do great and wonderful things. He healed the sick and he cured the blind. He brought hope to this broken world. 
And even when he did nothing wrong, you arrested him, beat him up, and killed him. You, all of you, you killed him. He, he was my son. And he was innocent. He was innocent. I, I knew him as a teacher. I was so blessed to listen to the words of a man who was more than a man. He showed me not to be too busy doing things of God, but instead, listen and understand his word. His word was that of grace. The grace that was so powerful that it could even forgive sin. And this praise that he talked about was a gift from God through faith in him. And it was nothing out of our own power. Did you know him? Well, I met Jesus near a well as I fetched water. And as a Samaritan, I could not understand why he would be talking to me. But he knew things about my life that were impossible for him to know. He knew my sins. He knew my life. And he told me about this living water that he can provide. Well, I wondered if he was trying to say <laughs> that he was greater than Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac. But then he told me about this living water and that whoever drinks from it would never thirst again. At that moment of him explaining to me about this living water, I needed it in my life. Well, I thought he was a prophet, but then he told me that the time is coming when true worshipers will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. And I believed him. Well, his grace breaks down barriers of nations and borders. And he showed me that salvation is not only for the Jews, but it is for everyone. At that moment, I believed that this man is the Messiah. He is the Christ. you 
Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but it was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels that were dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they've put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you're looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you've put him and I'll go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, this means teacher, do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I'm returning to him who is my Father and their Father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me. was rich I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time and there at the cross you paid the debt I owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I Into 
see freedom when I see that grave I see Jesus and from death to life I will sing your praise in the world to rock your voice when I see that cross I see freedom when I see that grave I see Jesus and from death to Now the eleven disciples were gathered in Galilee, at the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them to see him. This was after the angel had spoken to Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus at the tomb, telling them that Jesus was risen from the dead and was going to Galilee as he had said. Some of the disciples had just been with Jesus earlier that day, yet they did not recognize him. They told Jesus all that had happened, including the account of the women who did not find his body in the tomb. Yet, in all this, they hadn't recognized him until that time when he broke bread with them. So many times in our lives we fail to recognize what God is doing in our lives because we are so focused on our present situations or how bad things look and we miss what God is doing right before our eyes. But when we set our eyes back on Jesus, we realize that he has always been right there with us. So it was as the disciples talked amongst each other, Jesus himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. They were so overjoyed and marveled. Jesus opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. He said to them, These things were written, and it was therefore necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Jesus continued and promised them the Holy Spirit, saying, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are filled with power from on high, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This is still the call to every believer this day until the day of our Lord. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked toward heaven, behold, two angels stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? 
this same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him going into heaven. Thought that the world has kind of lost its way mm -hmm. Crazy as it seems, yeah, I know it's gonna be okay Ooh, yeah It doesn't scare me, it's temporary There's something better, we got forever And it won't be long, cause we know our help is on the way The way So keep your head up Jesus is coming back no, don't you give up Jesus is coming back, Jesus is coming back